Hello everyone, welcome to the Cisco SD-BAN course from orhanergun.net. This course is based on the exam code 30415, the implementing Cisco SD-BAN solutions. This is the updated version of our initial Cisco SD-BAN course, who helped many students to pass the exam as well as implement the Cisco SD-BAN in their networks. My name is Navid Yahyapur. I will be your instructor for this video series. As a start, I will talk about the theory and design of the Cisco SD-BAN solution. I will do an overview for the software-defined networking and especially software-defined wide area network. Then I will talk about what is SD-BAN, why we need the SD-BAN, what are the requirements that are forcing us to transition to using the software defined wide area networks instead of doing the classical WAN. It's talk about the whole idea is talking about the applications, the application awareness, utilization of all the links. Nowadays, the users, the companies are dealing with the applications compared to the old days. For example, we are dealing with the cloud-based softwares, cloud-based infrastructures. Then I will do a comparison between the IVAN versus the Viptela SD WAN. IVAN is the old version, the initial version of the Cisco's implementation for the software defined wide area network. What are the benefits of the Viptela SD WAN? Viptela is a company that Cisco acquired, bought the company, then product is called Cisco SD-WAN. Then I will talk about the different planes. We have management plane, control plane, orchestration plane, which is the new one. Maybe you have not heard of it. Then the data plane. I will go through the components. We will talk about what is vManage what we are going to do with the vManage, what are the capabilities of the vManage. Then we will talk about the vSmart, why we need the vSmart, why we need the redundancy, high availability for the vSmart. Then we will talk about the vBound, what is vBound doing exactly. We will talk about the different deployment models, the cloud-based deployment model, for example, on-premises deployment model. And at the end, we will go through the features. What features that the Cisco SD-WAN is providing? We have two labs. The first one, which is the main lab, as you can see from the picture, this topology will be used for most of our configurations for this Cisco SD-WAN. The second lab, we will talk about the controller's redundancy and high availability. We could merge these two labs and build a big one, but the problem is it is very resource consuming. If we combine this lab with the previous one, the resource requirements in order to virtualize all these nodes in the labs will be very huge. By the way, you will get both community, Eve and G, community and professional version of the labs. For getting this starting, getting the things ready, 
we will deploy the DNS server. Why we need the DNS server for the VBound redundancy, for example. We are dealing with the certificates. We need the network time protocol as well. That is a must when you are dealing with the certificates. We will deploy the certificate authority on the Windows server machine. Then we will onboard the controllers, the vManage, vBound, and the vSmart. You will get the step-by-step -step explanation for how to onboard the controllers. Then I will explain how to get the serial file with your Cisco smart account for the VAN Edge devices. Then we will onboard the VAN Edge devices, both Viptella as well as the iOS XE running devices. Viptella has its own operating system, which is different than the iOS XE. We will cover onboarding for both of these products. We will talk about the network address translation in the Cisco SD-WAN solution. I will show you how to configure the overloading net, the port address translation. Then we will configure the port forwarding as well as the static one-to-one -one net. Then we will talk about the templates. We have two kinds of templates feature templates and device templates. Feature templates like configuration of the OSPF, configuration of the BGP, the OMP, system configuration, and etc. We will do create the templates, then based on those feature templates, we can create the device templates and attach them to the devices, the controllers, as well as the VAN edge devices. Then I will talk about the OMP routes and T-Locks, overlay management protocol, the control plane protocol for the Cisco SD-WAN solution. I will show you what components they include both OMP and the T-Locks. Then we will talk about the T-Lock extension, why we need it, how to deploy it. We reach to the centralized policies. These policies are the true power of the Cisco SD-WAN solution, let's say. We have two kinds of them, centralized policies and the localized policies. Centralized policies will be applied to the vSmart devices. The vManage pushes these created centralized policies to the vSmart devices. Then vSmart, based on what type of policy it is, will react. For example, we have the centralized control policies. These are talking about the control plane stuff. For example, we can do the VPN membership. We can say which sites are participating with specific VPNs. For example, you have VPN 100, let's say. We have three different sites. Do you want these different sites to be participated in the VPN 100 or not? Do you want to isolate some VLAN in some site or not? And these kind of stuff. We will change the overlay topology by manipulating the OMP routes. We can make some changes to the SD-WAN fabric, the SD-WAN overlay topology. By default, the overlay topology is full mesh. The Vantage devices can create direct tunnels with the other Vantage devices. You can change this behavior. We will do the route prioritization in order to make, for example, the active and standby data centers. We need to manipulate some 
attribute in the OMP route. We will do the extranet as well, route leaking between the VPNs. We can do the exportation, the routes from one VPN to another one. Then I will configure the centralized data policies. This time we are dealing with the data plane. We can configure the service insertion. We can put some services like firewalls, the load balancers in the traffic path. We will block some applications using the centralized data policies. The most interesting feature is the application aware routing. For example, you can say this application traffic goes this way, internet transport. Another application traffic goes over the MPLS transport. We will do the traffic engineering. You can force the traffic to some use T locks instead of other ones, for example. The quality of service. In the quality of service using the centralized policies, we can do the policing. We can do the classification and marking for the applications. There is the application awareness also. Then we will discuss localized policies. Localized policies will be applied to the van edge devices. And they are being stayed on the van edge devices locally. For example, you want to make some changes to the BGP, the BGP neighbor, the OSPF. You want to put some filter list. These kind of functions are possible to do with the localized control policies. Again, it's talking about the control plane. We have the localized data policies as well. It is specifically talking about dealing with the quality of service. For example, we can define the queues. We can have low latency queue as an example. Then we can do the classification using the access control lists. We can also do the scheduling, put some schedulers and do the quality of service scheduling for the device, the end device for the traffic. Then we will talk about the STVAN and cloud-based softwares. There is a feature called Cloud on Ramp for software as a service. Why we need it, how to configure it. The whole idea is nowadays the end users are interacting, are accessing, using the cloud-based softwares. One of the famous ones is the Microsoft Office 365. The users are expecting better user experience when they are trying to use those cloud-based softwares. And Cisco SD-WAN trying to do the improvements for the user experience. Then we will configure and talk about the controller's redundancy, which is important and high availability. How to create the vManage cluster, how to do the redundancy and high availability for the vSmart devices. How can we group them together and tell the Vantage devices to use some group of the controllers. How we can configure the V-bound redundancy. For example, we need the FQDN, fully qualified domain name instead of the IP address when it comes to the V-bound redundancy. All of these stuff will be explained and configured step by step. 
And then I will talk about the security features of the Van Edge devices. These devices are the all-in-one security boxes as well. They have the zone-based firewall, IPS, URL filtering, and etc. I will configure the zone-based firewall to let you know how to create these security features and apply them to the Van Edge devices. And thank you for watching.